Now, Syrian capital is suffering a third consecutive day of water shortages after foreign-backed militants polluted the water resources there. A government cut off water to Damascus on Friday after terrorist attacks on all water resources feeding into the city and its surroundings. It said the uh, militants have contaminated the water resources into Damascus with pollutants and diesel. Authorities said that they'll use reserves and uh, pump water to various city neighborhoods according to a rationing schedule. An estimated 1.5 million people live inside Damascus with another 3.5 million living in its suburbs. Now joining us out of uh, Damascus for an update is our own Press TV's Mohammed Aldi. Hello there, Mohammed. Thanks for joining us on the program. Now, what more can you tell us about these terrorist contamination of the water resources there? And Mohammed, how many, do we know how many neighborhoods and people are actually being affected? Yes, uh, those affected are uh, the entire areas uh, and quarters uh, of Damascus and its countryside because the terrorists who are positioned in uh, uh, Wadi Barada Valley in the uh, northwestern countryside uh, of Damascus poisoned the, the uh, drinking water that feeds uh, Damascus and its countryside, which is called uh, Naba al uh, Spring over there by uh, adding uh, uh, fuel or, or diesel into uh, the, that, such a spring and uh, the water now cannot be used by uh, the uh, uh, residents of Damascus and its countryside. Now, there, this is not the first time that the terrorists attack uh, uh, water that feeds Damascus and its countryside. Uh, this is the third time that happens during the unrest. Uh, the reason behind uh, uh, such an act by terrorists is that, of course, you know, the Syrian army on Friday, just uh, two, day, two days ago, uh, started a military operation against the Al-Nusra Front in uh, so, some of the villages that are uh, in the western and northwestern countryside of Damascus, which are Basime and al Husseiniyah, because those terrorists refused uh, to uh, get out uh, in accordance with the deal with the Syrian government. Thus, the Syrian government which is, uh, and the Syrian army, which is determined uh, to secure the perimeter of the capital, decided uh, uh, thus to uh, attack those terrorists and end uh, uh, the threats uh, that they pose around uh, Damascus. And because of the Syrian army military operation here in the northwestern countryside, terrorists, in response, uh, 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 poisoned the, the water uh, that uh, feeds Damascus uh, and its countryside. This is not a surprise. However, at the end of the day, as usual, civilians are the ones suffering the most, the residents of Damascus and its countryside, not the government and not the Syrian army. And, and Mohammed, do we know if they're attacking a water resources plant or are they catching it earlier in, in a natural spring river? Do we have any idea where this attack is taking place? Yes, this attack is taking place in Berada Valley. This is where uh, uh, that uh, water uh, runs from. It, it's a spring. They are uh, putting a, a fuel and gasoline uh, or diesel uh, where uh, the water runs uh, in that river towards Damascus and its countryside. The Syrian uh, government cut the water resources directly in order for the uh, residents not to use that uh, water anymore without knowing that it is poisoned and started actually uh, giving and, and providing water, uh, 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 of course, using other resources. This is what the Syrian government has been doing. However, there is shortage because at the end of the day, there is not enough water if, the, if such a spring uh, is not being used. This is the main uh, uh, water resource for Damascus and its countryside. Well, thank you, Mohammed. It's uh, very unfortunate. We know millions of people are being affected. It's very daunting for the government to be able to provide all those families with enough adequate water. Thank you. As our own Press TV's Mohammed Ali giving us his update out of Damascus. Hey, Shalom, Makyam. First off, I want to say the water, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this video. And Shalom to you brothers out there that's doing the truth in sincerity. As you see in the video before, they are starting to poison the U.S., NATO, uh, using ISIS, using the militants that they're backing in Syria, they're starting to use them to poison the water in Damascus, which is the capital of Syria. If you watch a video I did, I would say about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, about the river of Euphrates drying up, then uh, you know that I was speaking about how the U.S., NATO, Saudi Arabia, Israel, the fake Jews, back in these ISIS and these militants that they back in Syria, they have been there for four years. So eventually uh, it's gonna head to the capital because you wanna, you wanna take down the capital 
which is where the government palaces are at, the capital of the militaries, everything is stationed. The main places and the main strongholds are settled in uh in Damascus. So that's what I was saying in the video that they're going to Damascus. They're not going to give up overtaking Assad and destroying Syria. They've been there for four years, man. Totally bombing them, destroying all kinds of places. Aleppo, Homs, Palmyra, Raqqa, which are different places in Syria, if you've been following um, this war. Now, of them poisoning the water, and then yesterday, a couple of days ago, Israel went into Damascus and bombed a military airport, a military stronghold. So now they're starting to get at Damascus. They're starting to move towards the capital to really start pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and trying to make this happen. Because we all know Russia slowed them down by bombing a lot of their uh, militants. But overall, the U.S. and NATO is still moving forward with these little militants all across Syria. And now, like I said, they're just moving towards more in Damascus, which is the capital. Now, I'm going to go through a couple of scriptures dealing with the destruction of Damascus in the scriptures. Jeremiah 49, verse 23. Now, when you look at Jeremiah 49 chapter, and you read the whole chapter, it goes into concerning Edom, concerning Ishmael, you know, the heathen, the different uh, heathen nations. And the concerning is talking about the judgment in the end times. So this, what I'm about to read, is a judgment of Damascus, Syria, overall, not just at one spot, but Syria overall, in the end times. Okay? Jeremiah 49, 23. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded in Arpad. Now, Hamath is a place not far north of Syria, but going right above Damascus. Our pad is around Aleppo. That's where that's around, which we know about this whole Aleppo, Aleppo, Aleppo. That's been very heavy in the news the past months and months. Uh, them totally destroying Aleppo, okay? So I'm going to start from the beginning again. Concerning Damascus, a month is confounded in our pad, for they have heard evil tidings, evil news. Now, before they invaded Syria with these militants that U.S. and NATO backed along with uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, the fake Jews, they was hearing all across the news about uh, Assad got to go, Assad got to go. We're going to use military. Giving the same news that they gave Saddam, giving the same news that they gave Gaddafi of Libya, that same news before they go in and invade, Okay. The only reason why they invaded predominantly using uh, other people like ISIS and the different militants and paying them off and setting them up to invade is because they knew that Russia has interest in Syria and that was going to be a big problem. It wasn't going to be easy. OK, so that's the evil tidings. And it says they are faint hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Now, when you go into the sea in the blue letter, it talks about. The Mediterranean Sea, which is right by Israel and Syria, okay? And it says it cannot be quiet. Why cannot be quiet? Because they've been bombing and bombing Syria for four years, man. They've been constantly bombing these people for four years trying to overtopple Assad in Syria, okay, and his empire. Now they're starting to head towards the capital of Syria, which is Damascus. When it says concerning Damascus, it's talking about the whole place of Syria. But I'm just pointing out that they're headed towards that capital, the head of it, which is Damascus. Okay? It says, they are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Right? Because it's nonstop bombing, nonstop calamities. Verse 24, Damascus is waxed feeble and turned herself to flee. Right? Damascus is getting weak and weaker and weaker. Why? Because U.S. and NATO are destabilizing it, man, by causing it to not be quiet. Constant bombings, just total, just total mayhem, man. Though it seems like they say, okay, well, the Syrian and Russia stopped them over here. Okay, well, then they moved the Syrian rebels to another place in Syria, and they just keep playing that game. 
they're just dishing out destruction. It says, and the fear has seized on her, anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travailage. Right, seized. The fear has seized on her. They're scared, man, because it won't stop. It won't be quiet. U.S. and NATO ain't going to stop sending those militants in there. They ain't going to give up after four years and a lot of money they've been pushing to arming these rebels with all kinds of missiles and military. A couple weeks ago, Obama signed a bill saying that they can give them any weapons they want now. So it's not, it's not a standard to just a certain type of weapon. They can give them any weapons, basically unlimited of any kind of weapons that they want to give them. He wrote it into law that they can give them. So that means they can give them nukes if they wanted to, according to what Obama just passed. Okay? So I'm going to read that again, verse 24. Damascus is wax feeble and turned herself to flee, and fear has seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman that travelleth. Right, those pains. And eventually, like I said, they're going to totally destroy all of Syria, man. And that's where it's headed. Okay? So with that, I just want to make a point to really look closely to what's going on in Syria. Because that's a, that's a prophecy. The Lord is doing that through the Spirit and judging them in the last days. And that's what's happening. And he's using who he been using to do it. Esau. Okay? <laughs> the Most High Sword. The devil himself. All right? So with that, I want to say, Thawada, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this video. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you brothers out there that sincerely wait for the Lord. Shalom. Syria has accused Israel of carrying out what it called a flagrant rocket attack on a major military base outside Damascus. These pictures were published on social media while explosions were heard and smoke was seen rising from the area. The airbase at Metsa is used by President Assad's elite Republican guards. Israel has in the past targeted positions of Lebanon's Hezbollah group inside Syria. Earlier, a suicide bomber struck a heavily policed district of Damascus, killing at least seven people, according to state television. Several others are said to have been wounded. A police source said the suicide bomb went off in the Kafr Susa neighborhood, where some of Syria's main security installations are located. The report said it happened near a sports club, giving no more details. The opposition monitoring group, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which is based abroad but has a wide network of contacts inside the country, says four soldiers, including a colonel, were killed.